Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Our adventure starts here. Not sponsored by Bass Pro. Started off at the fire this morning. I uh, figured I'd just go ahead, get some protein in the system. I've got some eggs from home. And, uh, wow, that boat arc is no joke hard. Oh, gosh, that stuff is like concrete. The dying bluegill right now just has me concerned that there's uh, something else going on in the water. Uh, the water was around 49 to 51 yesterday, but fish should not be dying uh, from that, that cold of water. That's not, that's not even that cold. And because I didn't smash them yesterday, that is why I'm taking my sweet time, watching the sunrise and the world come alive, and eating some delicious eggs that we brought from the Rackley Roost. One olive, one blue, and one standard brown one. Ah, I broke the last one. I always break the last one. Dadgummit. This is just not good and hot enough. We're gonna have to go manual. Manual mode. Oh, eggs don't take that long anyways. I think they're pretty much done. I wanna see how non-stick. Oh, hang on a minute. This pan might be the deal. Oh yeah, I can slide this whole pancakery of egg out of here. Just a tiny bit of sticking around the edges. It's not a full slide out of the pan, but it's pretty darn close. Those eggs are cooked just the way I like them. I am just impressed. I'm impressed with this thing. This whole back of it used to be a uh, copper. It was like copper plated and it got corroded and now it's just kind of a burnt rust brown, but still doing the trick, you know? 30, 40, 50 years later, who knows? It almost tastes like eggs that you would get in a uh, in a brisket taco with egg. It has that same kind of smoky flavor. Went ahead and packed up everything and we are going to uh, possibly go to another lake today if this one isn't showing some promise, let's just say. Same scenario as yesterday, guys. I don't get it. Just got dead, di dying fish. Not just dead, but dying. It's like good sized bluegills, big hand sizers too. So weird. Gulls are, are crazy. I've never seen this many gulls out here. Just opportunistic gulpers. There's thousands of them. So my hunch that that is affecting the fishery in some way. Bass might be just chocked full, not hungry, maybe not feeling the best because the, the water conditions aren't, aren't great. But we're gonna give it a shot for a couple hours and then uh, if it sucks, we're going to another lake. All right, so it's 50 feet behind me. I decided to start on a spot that's got uh, a little bit deeper water on a bluff. It's not far from camp, but it'll kind of give me some, uh, give me some advice. Give me some clues. I still, I can't, we can't take this out of our hands here, guys. The jerk bait. It's deadly. It's nasty. Can't be trifled with. In February. It's one, of the, it's one of the goats. But God, they got dying shad everywhere. It's like, why would they even hit that? Why are they gonna hit this jerk bait when there's 45 shad around them that are doing the same thing? Well, not 10 minutes being out here, of course, the wind has decided to kick 
it into high gear. So I, I'm going to be restricted. I, I'm going to go up into a little creek arm that uh, I can kind of tuck in and it's protected. Uh, I'd rather fish main lake this time of year, but we got to do what we can with what we got. Well, y'all, I just ran into a fellow fishing freak that was more than kind. And uh, I gave him some of our new, our new baits, our new saucy slimmer, because he said he caught 35 pounds of bass last night on the saucy swimmer. And I was like, what is going on? I must suck. And he said, no, no. Uh, everywhere you see dead shad and all these gulls, you're not going to catch them. He was coming up here to just check something and luckily I ran into him. Thankfully, because that just helps by my braid, my mental state, because I'm like, man, what am I doing wrong? So he didn't catch him anywhere around here. So he said, you gotta find the bait, you gotta be in a different part of the lake. And I ain't getting there with this boat. But I sure did enjoy camping out here, getting a nice sunset, sunrise, and looking at the water, that was pretty. But yeah, bass ain't happening. Load it up and we're gonna head to another lake somewhere I've never been and the wind is just tough. Uh, it's a smaller lake so we should be able in the wind to, to kind of get around. Just came through a new gate, fishing reports, chatting it up with the, uh, the park attendant. Mmm, not good is what they're saying, but worth a try, worth a try. It's on my way back anyways. I got a sneaky suspicion we're gonna catch something out of here. We're gonna get something. And it is not nearly as wavy. Oh look, there's a full grown bass boat out there. Dad gum. I swear I saw that guy yesterday on the on the other lake. He's got that same hoodie on, same boat. She's purring so good after I changed her gear lube. New lake, new lake, new dangle. Uh, I actually have a map for this lake, that's cool. Looks like it's gonna be a shallow, dirty kind of deal. Uh, just gotta explore. We gotta do a little exploring first, see what it looks like on the electrodes. We got out here. 49 and a half degree water. Mm, could be some offshore rock opportunities. Didn't even think about that. Okay, we got a little depth, 21 foot. Shad wads out deep. We have suspended open water crappies in here. I don't think there's white bass. We some little suspended open water crappies in here? It's something that I haven't done a whole lot of that is really fun. Suspended open water crappies and now it's the time to do it. All right, boys, I've been plinking around on some crappie. I can't get them to bite. They'll come up to it, they'll nose it and they're just not, not fully committed. My anchor's not even sticking. I'm frustrated and I'm going to put on what you should put on with the magazines and the textbooks and the videos and all that. That's This is what they'll say. Put that on right there. Put that on and go fling it around. I am, I am missing my spot lock so damn bad. Like that is... Uh, over live scope, I would take spot lock. Get in here. Uh, bottom of this lake is just like hard bottom shells. Spoon man. Look at all those glorious spoons. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna spin around. We're gonna just start chunking. Oh, 
don't even know. I'm sure there's bass in here, but I have like zero knowledge. Zero knowledge of these waters. Oh my gosh. Oh, reaction rod. I think I got 20 pound line on here. Just ready to rock a giant. I don't know what it is about this green reaction rod, but it just loads, loads and goes. I'm gonna go and catch one up here on the crankbait, or I'm gonna go out deep. I'm gonna spoon one. You don't have to have grass to do this, by the way. <laughs> There's zero grass in here. Now everybody talks about the, the you know, ripping the trap in the grass, but you actually don't need it at all. They will still eat it without any grass. Found me a little spot with some woody cover. There's probably nothing in here right now, but God, it looks good. I bet at some point there is. To throw on the old spinner bait, give it a just keep them honest. That's what the crispy's made for, right here. Dirty, dirty, dirty stuff. There's one. Oh, yeah, it's a good bass, too. Here we go, baby. Dirty water fish. Let's go. Mm. Oh, come here. Oh, let's go, baby. Dirty water spinnerbait fish, man. Had to throw on a zinger and see in that shallow wood. Send that crispy into her home territory. Woo, baby. Guys, that fish means a lot to me. After trying and experimenting and experimenting and trying. Wow. Here we go. That's a sign of life. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what kind of length we got on this guy. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Now he's almost 18 inches. It's usually about a three pounder. Love to see it. Yes, sir. Thank you for that bite. Gotta sniff ya. 
God, you smell good. Angry. That was worth the price of admission. Spinner bait. Oh, guys. Fish was in like two feet of water. I just had to try that out because uh, I just looked back at the graph. I saw the water temps were about three degrees warmer from where I was fishing, just in that little, little pocket on the end of the lake that is shallower. That was fun. Wow, that made my day. Just made my dangle. There's another little pocket coming up here that's got some wood in it, so we'll give that a try as well. Okay, there's the rocks. Oh, the old drone motor, that's taking a beating. You're so lucky we did not lose a prop right there. Snags. Oh, don't break. Don't break the rod. Oh, I can't get this one off. And we're about to run into the rocks. All right, we're back in the game. Got my spinnerbait back. There's a big color shift in the water. Coming up right here. I want to see if there's anything in here. Let's hit the ground again. In the mud. I just found a creek that's running back behind all this crap, but I don't know if I can get in there. I mean, if any boat can, it's probably this one. So I'm just gonna send it. Just going off of, I did catch uh, a bass in really shallow water on a spinnerbait, warming trend. Sometimes in February in the south, that means the creek can be very good, so. Touching bottom a little bit. Come on, baby. Okay, we're, be we're in one foot. It's not looking great. Look at this sh shallow brush, wood everywhere. I think we might be doing okay. I think we might be getting in here, boys. We're hitting the hump, we're hitting the big hump. This is where it's gonna get gnarly. It's getting gnarly. Oh, I just hit two, oh, we're in four foot, boys, we're in. Oh yeah. This is gonna be a hero or zero deal here. Give me my zinger. Let's see what we got. Sometimes the mouth is a good, good place to start. Oh, the water temp's already 54. It's 55. We're gonna be. Oh, I just spooked something. I bumped something. I don't know if it's a carp. Felt a hit and then I saw a little mud swirl. Look at all that hog wallering, that's fresh stuff. This was uh, exactly the opposite thing that I expected to be doing when I started this journey, but that's, that's part of the fun of adventure. This is typically the first place bass will move into in the spring because it gets warmest the first and we're very early, but 
we're just gonna we're just gonna see here it looked great it had to be tried y'all i just think we're a little early to the party so typically early march that's kind of the deal we're still in february early february but what i saw and a tip to take away from it if you see that water temp start to go down then you need to turn back around fish that warmer water that's usually the best place to be but at some point these fish are going to roll up in here hooked up on a slurping i don't know what we got oh my gosh wow it's my old friend the gasper goo don't you just want to put him in a frying pan doesn't he look delicious oh buddy man thought i was about to catch me a big suspendo fish and uh he just swam right down, swam right back down to the bottom there. There's definitely things that are attacking shad. I just don't know what they are. Back at the ramp and golly, did I miss the boat. Ooh, it irks me. So, turns out I did see the same guy on Possum Kingdom yesterday. And uh, he, I, he just ran into me at the ramp, he's a fan. And uh, I was like, man, I thought I saw you. And I saw all his poles out and they were like no less than 10 feet long. One was 18 feet long, crappie dangling. All right, so I had to get the low down. They caught him suspended though. Nothing big, nothing big, just numbers, but suspended, which I thought, I thought in the last little deal where I caught the drum, I was like, okay, all right, we're getting on a little something right there. But it was, it was so difficult with the, with the scope back here, the trolling motor up here to keep it in position. It's hard, it's hard to get those suspended fish right now, but I was looking for it, I missed it dadgummit. It was so nice, he gave me some, some of his hand-tied crappie jigs. These are good news jigs. Each one a different color representing a different, uh, a different verse in the, the good, the best book of all, the Bible. But I've run into two fishing freaks today. I, I love seeing you guys out on the water and I love hearing your stories and I love hearing your fishing tips. And I also never cease to be humbled by you guys out on the lake. I, I've run into so many fishing freaks out on the lake that just slay. So you guys are awesome. Thank you for, for watching me. I mean, I, hopefully you learned something every once in a while. Today was, was a little rough, a little rough around the edges, but Thanks for being with me. Subscribe to the channel because we got more outdoor ventures to do together. Smash that like button and I'll see you guys on the next one.